Hi everyone. Polycystic ovarian syndrome. It is the most common condition of hormonal imbalance in women. And today we are going to bust a few myths about it. So I, Dr. Neha Gupta, I bring you greetings from Feminine and let's get going. So the first myth is that you need to have polycystic ovaries to have PCOS. Well, that's not true. If your menstrual cycles are irregular and you have features of testosterone excess in the form of pimples and increased growth of hair over your face, such as in the upper lip or in the chin or in the side buns, then the presence of these two factors still make you have PCOS. It is not mandatory to have polycystic ovaries on ultrasound to make a diagnosis of PCOS. Myth number two, if you have menstrual cycle irregularities, then you have PCOS. So again, I would like to reiterate that the diagnosis of PCOS requires the presence of only two out of three criteria. First criteria, menstrual irregularity. Second criteria, blood tests showing increased levels of testosterone or there are clinical features of excess testosterone in the body in the form of acne, oily skin or increased facial hair. And third, the presence of polycystic ovaries on ultrasound. So we need the presence of two out of these three criteria to make a diagnosis of PCOS. Just if you have menstrual irregularities and you do not have any of the other two criteria, then do not jump onto the conclusion that you have PCOS. We would need to investigate you further with menstrual irregularities to find out the reason for those irregular cycles. Myth number three, everyone with PCOS is overweight and obese. So well, that is not completely incorrect, I would say, because at least 50 to 70% of the women which means five to seven out of every 10 girls or women who have PCOS are actually overweight and obese but then it's not 100% we actually have we you know we have a category of lean PCOS or the thin PCOS that is the women who are thin or who are lean can also have PCOS myth number four everyone with PCOS must go on the birth control pill Again, that is just a myth. For the treatment of PCOS, and the first and the foremost is lifestyle modification. I cannot emphasize enough on it that it is the lifestyle modification which is the pillar of the management of PCOS. When we say lifestyle modification, what does it mean? It means eating healthy and doing a regular, regular workout. For any other intervention to be successful in PCOS, lifestyle modification is a must. Birth control pills are one of the first line treatments of PCOS, but, but not everybody with PCOS will need to go on the pill. So many women just by controlling their weight, by eating healthy, by going on regular workouts are, you know, they are able to get back to their regular menstrual cycles. It is said that if you lose even 5 to 10% of your body weight, then the cycles at time get back to their normalcy. They can become regular once again. However, if the lifestyle modification alone is not getting us the desired results, then yes, we may consider giving the birth control pills. Myth number five, you need an ultrasound to be diagnosed with PCOS. So this again brings us to the earlier point that ultrasound is not mandatory to make a diagnosis of polycystic ovarian syndrome. As I have said, even if the cycles are irregular along with the presence of features of excess testosterone levels in the form of acne, oily skin and increased hair growth over the face and other body areas, then the presence of those two features itself is enough to make a diagnosis of PCOS. Ultrasound is not required in those cases to establish a diagnosis.